anything you guys wanted to talk about maybe that I didn't ask you about or anything you want to add? I want to know how you're feeling about skydiving this afternoon. Hi, I'm Clint. I'm Erica, and this is Big Sky Bus here in Lockhart, Texas. We met skydiving seven years ago? Seven years ago. Seven yeah. years ago. But I had a caveat when Clint asked me to marry him, and that was that we had to figure out a way to live differently. Um, pare down, live simpler, do things a little bit differently. And so he said, OK, yeah, sure. It took us a little while, and then he came up to me and he was like, okay, I have this idea. You're gonna think it's crazy. I was like, uh, well, I mean, we're a little crazy, so lay it on me. And he said, I wanna live in a school bus. And I kind of paused and I was like, well, show me. So he showed me some pictures and some videos of schoolies, and they were amazing. And I said, yeah, let's do it. I've been living tiny for a few years. Well, living out of two bags, really, um, traveling around the world, so it's real easy for me to say, Oh yeah, we'll live, live in a tiny home because I had two bags. I'd pared everything down before, and Erica had uh, Erica's an interior designer, so had work outfits and skydiving outfits and the accumulation in a in a home in Houston. And uh, it was a lot harder for you to pare everything down than it was for me. It was uh, years of planning to get to the point where we found a bus, and yeah, now we live next to an airport in our self-built tiny home and get to jump out of planes and run our own business and yeah, yeah, all in. So our bus is a 1977 California Crown. It's got a Detroit diesel engine, which is flipped over sideways. It's called pancaked underneath and it's 36 feet long. We bought it about five years ago. It took us about a year and a half to do the full conversion and then we've been living in it for about three years. Just before COVID hit, we decided we wanted to buy a property. So we searched around near the drop zone. We bought eight acres just outside of Lockhart, which is a little south of Austin. We've got chickens. We've got a big garden. We've got a pasture with some bees. And then we also have some additional RV slots we put in so that we can live with some other like-minded, awesome people. We're half a mile from the drop zone. So uh, we can see it from where we are right now. So whenever the urge takes us, we can go and jump out of airplanes. We've worked really hard on building a garden and putting everything together so we can grow our own food and have our own little cool hippie community, right? Starting on the outside of the bus, we built a little deck here. We chose this position on the farm so that one, we would get amazing sunsets every night so we can just hang out on our spot here. One of the things we love is to just walk outside the bus, hang out on the deck and look up and there's just people flying through the air. You want to come on in? Come on. After you. Thank you. Welcome to Big Sky Bus. During the planning phase, when we were thinking about the bus and starting to pick out finishes and work on the layout, I had a little bit too much champagne one night. And Clint and I were chit-chatting and I was a little buzzed and I had this colorful pom-pom and I was just like messing with this pom-pom. And Clint goes, what in the world are you doing? And I was like, I just want the bus to look like the rainbow threw up on it. <laughs> and so that's kind of what we were going for. We didn't want it to be garish or like a circus, but we wanted color. We wanted it to feel light and airy and cozy, but also just open, which is a really hard thing to do in a tiny home. Starting with the front of the bus, we didn't touch it really. It's as it came out with just a bit of extra paint. We didn't want to change the fact that it's actually a bus. It's a functioning bus. We can literally start it up with some battery chargers and drive it down the road right now. But we left that plane. It's a nice little area for storing shoes and 
somewhere here to put our coats and stuff. It's just a nice transition into what is essentially our home on wheels. How we designed it in the beginning was that we were planning on driving, so we put a seat right here for Erica that we've nicknamed the Queen's Throne. Funny fact, this was the only piece of soft furnishing I was allowed to have any kind of design input on. Um, I don't know whether it, I, it was because I chose the zebra on it or not that I wasn't involved in any of the others, but Erica being a designer uh, is much better qualified than me for that. So uh, yeah, the Queen's Throne right here and underneath shoe storage. Flip up storage right here. As we've said, storage in a bus is super important. Do you know what's perfect for small space living? Gaming on your smartphone. It's a tiny, fun hobby. Recently, I've been digging Matchmasters, a competitive match three puzzle game that allows you to compete with opponents from all over the world. After a long day of tiny house filmmaking, I love to unwind with a little gameplay. Matchmasters is a laid back way to disconnect from the world for a bit while challenging my mind. I really like that it's easy to learn, but hard to master, so it keeps me on my toes. If you're looking for a fun way to chill out, then you should download Matchmasters for free and support our channel. Even better, Matchmasters is giving away 10 $200 Amazon gift cards. For a chance to win, just download Matchmasters from the link in the description or the QR code on the screen, then collect 50 stars. Thanks for your help supporting today's video and good luck winning an Amazon gift card. So here we are in the kitchen. I love to cook. Uh, food has been a huge part of our relationship as well. So we wanted to make sure that uh, I was able to keep producing amazing meals for Erica. So we started off here needing a pantry. We've got a huge pantry right here with uh, some really nice big deep shelves. And then underneath, one of the highlights for the kitchen is having this huge big drawer. It's actually a double height drawer with super, super strong hardware on it because inside there we keep our instant pot and we've got a uh, KitchenAid mixer. So uh, every bus needs a mixer so we can bake some cookies. And then moving in through here, there's a funny story with this countertop. Erica took me to a reclaimed wood showroom and um, showed me the wood that she wanted to put in our kitchen for the countertop. And at the time, this wood looked like some mossy plank that had been left outside for years. And my reaction was, oh, hell no. What are you going to do with that? And she said, trust me, this is what I do for a living. And the first pass with a sander, I sent Erica a video and a message saying, this looks better than I thought it would. And then a second pass with the sander with a finer grit. And I was like, God damn it, she's right. She's right. And then two layers of polyurethane later and uh, we end up with this beautiful countertop. So we designed the kitchen so that I can be working at the stove here. Right here I've got my sink. And then a fun little fact is that we built in a refrigerator right here, a countertop, under counter refrigerator that we can get in there. We actually converted a chest freezer using an Inkbird inline thermometer so that essentially it only provides power to the fridge as it is now when it reaches a certain temperature so that it just keeps the cool air in and as cool air condensates it gets lower, it doesn't come out of the fridge when you open it. So. It's been incredibly efficient on electricity. It all runs off solar, so uh, super nice there, but no ice maker. So uh, one of the things we have to do without. But uh, one of my favorite design, well, there's so many design features in here that I absolutely love. Um, the Lego Backsplash. This is 3,400 pieces of Lego that uh, we source from um, various Lego dealers around the country. It's lightweight, it's easy to clean, it's a great, focal point and conversation point. But one of my favorite parts of the entire kitchen being the cook is the flip up leaf right here, which enables us to have a U-shaped kitchen for easy prep and for us to be able to quite often we'll stand and have dinner and chatting or prepare food and then sit with it on our laps. But uh, yeah, it's super good. We've had a custom insert made here into the drawer for our uh, cutlery. We have a custom made spice drawer right here. As I said, two trash cans right underneath. Yeah, just makes for a nice easy transition then through into the lounge and the rest of the living area. 
finally found a bus after planning sensibly and logically to get a bus that was like early early 2000s late 90s this was the plan right it was going to be nice square robust new bus with a great engine and drivetrain and everything and and then we got emotional <laughs> and then yeah we kept looking at places and we couldn't find the right one and we looked at different buses that had rust and all sorts and I got an email one day that had a whole load of different buses on it and one of the last ones on it was a 1977 California Crown bus that to me where like old school Americana appeals to me I looked at this bus and I was like oh holy shit that's amazing but every single panel was curved but it looks like a combi van with a split screen and I common sense Clint said this is not the bus for us because it met none of our criteria whatsoever and we went to see it and fell in love with it instantly uh, instantly so we bought a bus that had curved walls <laughs> curved ceiling yeah. an, an engine in between the wheels underneath <laughs> the main floor just not not anything that we had on our list at all and uh yeah we thought it'd be three months of converting and um, it'd be done. 18 months later, <laughs> we moved in. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing people don't tell you when you're building a schoolie for yourself is that treble, quadruple the amount of time you think it's going to take because I'm very ambitious with things like that, but I'd never owned a tool in my life before we decided to convert a school bus and cut the roof off and raise it and all sorts. And we were very fortunate that the schoolie community's got a lot of YouTube videos yes. out there explaining how to do it. So this is Pete. Pete is our Texas Blue Lacey, and we got Pete the same day that we bought the bus. We really wanted a dog that grew up with the bus and understood that the bus was going to be home. And as you can see, I think he understands that this is his home. We joke around that we built the bus for Pete. This is our lounge. This is where we spend a lot of our time. We spend a lot of our time hanging out on the couch. Uh, I spend a lot of time sitting here while Clint is cooking delicious meals for me, which is fantastic. Oftentimes Pete and I will snuggle here while Clint's cooking. This was a tricky spot. So right underneath my feet is the access panel to the engine. So we had to make sure that this was completely clear. Uh, it worked out great. This is often where I do yoga. So it doesn't look like it, there's enough room, but my yoga mat rolls out perfectly right here. I can move these ottomans to the side. The, I would do it, but we have somebody in the way. The, the couch actually flips up if I need just a little bit more room. Under the sofa is hidden storage. So there's more shoes, there's extra blankets, there's our luggage when we need to go on vacation. It all hides under there. These little movable ottomans, one, they're also great for extra seating. We don't often have people come sit with us or enjoy a meal with us, but when we do, these are great. They're also storage, everything's storage in a tiny home. So these have gifts or gift wrap, just all the little things you don't think about that you kind of accumulate over time. This bookcase here was brainchild of our cabinet maker. We had never thought about doing a bookcase in here. And he came up with this idea and he sent us a picture and we loved it. We didn't have a, a whole lot of space to put the little knickknacks that you collect while you travel or little gifts people give you or just pictures, just a place to have picture frames. If we back up here, this was where we had intended to do our little tiny wood burning stove. But now that we're in Texas, we don't really need it. It's again, just a fantastic place for storage and more plants. I think every time we go to a nursery, we buy a plant. So, When I moved to Houston, I went to the Natural Science Museum. And if you've never been, you should. It's fantastic. The paleontology exhibit is amazing. And I, I went to the Natural Science Museum, and I started telling everybody about it. Like, you should see the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are unbelievable. And then I kind of quickly became the dinosaur lady. So you've probably noticed there's little dinosaurs. You've probably also noticed the really big dinosaur. We knew we had one blank wall that we could do something really fun. So one of our friends, Bobby, who is a skydiver and a tattoo artist, helped us create this mural inside the bus. This is probably the biggest dinosaur you'll see. The smallest dinosaur is my engagement ring here, which is actually a little dinosaur bone that Clint surprised me with. So I try to not make it the dinosaur bus. I hope I've done a little subtle job, but they're sneaky. Dinosaurs are sneaky. 
I'll take you back here to the bathroom now. Uh, the bathroom is one of my favorite spots, mainly because I love tile, and I picked my favorite tile in the entire world to go in the shower. So we tiled the entire shower, all three walls, even the back wall with the vanity on it. The vanity is constructed out of PVC. You can buy PVC planks just like you would buy plywood. So you can buy PVC just how you would buy plywood, cut it up and create cabinetry out of it just like you would with plywood or any other kind of wood. So the whole cabinet is waterproof as well. We tiled the front. So I often do my makeup standing in the shower, but that way everything in the shower can get wet. I decided to be a little asymmetrical and push the sink all the way into the corner. We got this really teeny tiny sink. It's perfect for brushing your teeth or just washing your hands in. And then I have a pretty big vanity space right here to do whatever we want. Our drawers are all soft closed drawers and I also hid an electrical outlet inside the drawer. So I don't have an outlet anywhere out that's gonna get hit with water or is unsightly. So it's hidden, I can dry my hair, I can steam my clothes. There's so many cool little things we thought about while we were planning this bathroom. Of course it's very small and then everything has to be waterproof because it is so small. We have a nature's head composting toilet. I think a lot of people are familiar with those. If you're not, Google it. I don't really want to explain a composting toilet to you, but it works just fine. There's no smell, easy peasy. One of the things I heard when we were researching tiny homes was that we live in a country that has such easy access to water and we're using it to flush down our waste. And there are people in the world who have no access to clean water. And so that makes me feel really good that we're not wasting clean water for such a thing. Back here is our closet. And when I say our closet, I mean my closet. Most of my clothes are in here or extra bathroom stuff. Clint and I have this thing called why not. And so if one of us says to the other one, hey, do you want to do this? Or do you want to go see that? Or do you want to blah, blah, blah. The other one has to respond with why not. Yeah, so you, you can't, can't say no. Can't say no right yeah. off the bat. Mm. So that's what, kind of how we have the bus. Um, it's how we moved onto a drop zone. It's how we bought a farm. Um, and now it's how we have an upholstery shop. So, but now that we own an upholstery shop, now we kind of look around and we're like, ooh, maybe we could like do something here. Or maybe our headboard could be something fun. Well, we haven't made any changes to how we built the bus. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's more stuff coming. It's funny because I've always loved furniture and moving into a tiny home, like you move in here and it's like, well, that's the end of ever having to buy any furniture again, right? I don't think I've moved as much furniture in my life as I have in the last 12 months, like different chairs and all sorts. But I get to fall in love with a piece of furniture and then have my heart broken when, it's, when it leaves the shop. But it kind of it scratches that itch, you know, and uh, we get to produce just gorgeous furniture with wonderful people around us. And I think it's one of the best things we ever did. For me in particular, Erica had been working a real job for the last 15 years, whereas for the last 10 years, I've been jumping out of planes for a living. Having had real jobs in the past, here's the pup, um, having had real jobs in the past, um, there you go. it was a funny transition going back to being in a office, in, well, I say office environment, a work environment, something that I had to learn about. And, you know, in the two years prior to that, we'd bought the farm. And so having to learn about farming and growing our own food and running water and electrical and all sorts of different things, you know, you'll get a general theme that we're not happy unless we've got a project, a, a project or two or three going on. Yeah, it's been fun. Exhausting, but fun. It's been super fun. Yeah. Oh, hey. So we're right at the back of the bus now. Um, we decided to build the bed up as a single platform as there's really not enough space to get around a bed. And we managed to fit a queen size bed in here. We built in some uh, fantastic storage here on each side. This is actually where all of my clothes are within these three storage blocks. They're real deep. Erica has them on the side there for even more of her clothes. We get a beautiful view out here of the trees and the pond behind us and a nice cross breeze coming from the two windows on either side. The bed is above Pete's purpose-built kennel below, where there's two really nice big drawers on either side. Underneath the bed as well, we've got all of our electrical panels set up and our uh, solar storage bank. 
It's a great little space for us. It gets nice and dark in the back with our custom made draperies that our company does as well. It's a really unique property. It's, it's R shaped. The front's pretty clean. And then the back has a pond and some trees and a really nice pasture. It was perfect to set up to have multiple people live here, which was something we wanted right off the mm -hmm. bat. My grandparents have a farmhouse up in Michigan that my grandma had lived in. I think she was born in the house. And anytime somebody needed something, they went and lived on the farm, whether it was for a week or a couple years. But that's where you went to kind of like reset your life. And mm -hmm. so I kind of wanted that. I wanted to create a place where people needed to just recharge or just needed something or just wanted a simpler place to live that they could come to our farm. So we put in some RV slots because we were putting in slots for the bus. It has a little house on the property and slowly we started renting out all the slots in the house and they're all skydivers so we know and love them all. Most of them work over there. Yeah. You can maybe hear the plane right now. It's probably some of them about to jump out. And it's amazing. Everybody helps out. So we have a group chat and we can say, hey, you know, we forgot to do something. And somebody immediately is like, oh, I got it. I'm on it. We'll get home from work and somebody's mowed the lawns or somebody's fed the chickens. Just it's a really cool little community that we've got here of people that will keep to themselves when they want to and be part of a real fun, kind community. I stopped counting skydives at 10,000. And so for me, jumping out of a plane is, it's my peace. If I jump out of an airplane, there is nothing else on my mind. And that's just an incredibly special thing. That I is, find it, yeah. I guess that's the thing I've, I chase in a lot of things, right? You're two miles up in the sky and nobody driving around in those tiny, tiny cars, they have no idea you're floating above them. And so you feel this, massive power and then this teeny and teeny tiny grain right. of sand and it was it's so powerful erica won't tell you this but she was a u.s championship gold medalist what last not this time the last time you went to nationals yeah it was a couple times yeah yeah so she's pretty much a badass <laughs> yeah somebody had asked me a long time ago if i would ever live in a tiny home and my response was hell no I liked my stuff. I liked having a giant closet. I liked having all those things. And then I met Clint and he had two bags and he was, I'm gonna steal a phrase from you, Clint was happy as a pig in shit. And I just realized I can do that. It's a choice to be happy with less things. And so you can do this and you can totally change your life. And I think that's what keeps us changing too. I don't think we're striving for a particular lifestyle. I think we're just enjoying where our life is taking us. Yeah, for sure. Like, there's not a big goal, is there? No. It's just like, <laughs> we'll just keep doing what makes us happy and keeps our life fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that just starts with, it sounds corny, but that starts with why not, right? Because otherwise people are gonna be always looking for an excuse to not do something. Yeah. But, you know, why not? What are the reasons why we shouldn't do that? You know, what are the reasons tying us to paying HOA fees and bullshit like that? You know, where we can we can create our own little hippie community here on a farm and live the way we want to live. You know, that's that's some freedom right there, and we're free to do whatever we want to do without any constraint. That's that's pretty rad. It's pretty rad. We're pretty cool. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Don't forget to download Matchmasters for a chance to win a $200 Amazon gift card. Link in the description.